Good evening, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this evening's evening prayer. This is, um, <clears throat> it's, it's Wednesday evening, Wednesday the 22nd of, um, of November. And um, this evening we are, uh, well, today in the church, we are remembering St. Cecilia. St. Cecilia was a martyr at Rome, and she was... She was martyred in around the year 230. That's Saint Cecilia, who was martyred around the year 230. So remember her this day, the 22nd of November. And so let's pray as we come to the end of another day. Oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Your faithful servants bless you. May make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. Now, as darkness is falling, wash away our transgressions, Cleanse us by your refining fire and make us temples of your Holy Spirit. By the light of Christ, dispel the darkness of our hearts and make us ready to enter your kingdom where songs of praise forever sound. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. And um, let's say the, the Magnificat, the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the Lord. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. And our psalm this evening is Psalm 73. Psalm 73 is one of my favorite psalms, actually. Psalm 73. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> Psalm 73 In you, Lord God, have I made my refuge Or in the Lord God have I made my refuge Truly God is loving to Israel To those who are pure in heart Nevertheless, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. 
for I was envious of the proud. I saw the wicked in such prosperity. For they suffer no pains, and their bodies are sleek and sound. They come to no misfortune like other folk, nor are they plagued as others are. Therefore, pride is their necklace, and violence wraps them like a cloak. Their iniquity comes from within. The conceit of their hearts overflow. They scoff and speak only of evil. They talk of oppression from on high. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue ranges round the earth. And so the people turn to them and find in them no fault. They say, how should God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked. Ever at ease, they increase their wealth. Is it in vain that I cleansed my heart and washed my hands in innocence? All day long have I been stricken and chastened every morning. If I had said, I will speak as they do, I should have betrayed the generation of your children. Then thought I to understand this, but it was too hard for me. Until I entered the sanctuary of God and understood the end of the wicked. How you set them in slippery places, you, you cast them down to destruction. How suddenly do they come to destruction, perish and come to a fearful end. As with a dream when one awakes, so Lord, when you arise, you will despise their image. When my heart became embittered and I was pierced to the quick, I was but foolish and ignorant. I was like a brute beast in your presence. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing upon earth that I desire in comparison with you. Though my flesh and my heart fail me, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly, those who forsake you will perish. You will put to silence the faithless who betray you. But it is good for me to draw near to God. In the Lord God have I made my refuge, that I may tell of all your works. In the Lord God have I made my refuge. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And our prayer, Holy God, may we find wisdom in your presence and set our hope not on uncertain riches, but on the love that holds us to the end in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As I said, this is one of my favorite psalms, and I would love to preach on it, but it will take me from away from my other to read it, but just to pull out a few things. The reason, one of the reasons I love this psalm is because it is so, it is so modern, really. It is so, so relevant and contemporary to our world. The psalmist is looking out on the world and he sees the wicked, the wicked who are doing evil things. And one of the characteristic of the wicked is that they are prospering. The wicked seems to be getting better. They, 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 he says their bodies are sleek and sound. They seem to suffer no pains like other people. They don't suffer misfortune like other folks. They are not plagued like others are. It seems like the wicked are amassing wealth. The wicked have good health. And they are wicked. They are doing evil things. Their pride is their necklace. Violence wraps them like a cloak. They scoff and speak only of evil. They talk of oppression from on high. In other words, they, 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 as far, far as they are concerned, they are, 
they, they, they see their lives as oppressed by the Almighty. But the point is, these are the wicked and they are prospering. And then he said, um, and then he says he, he, looks at, he looks at himself. He's a righteous man. Uh, he's a righteous person, but he's not prospering. He's not, he's not as healthy. He doesn't have the riches of the wicked. And so he's, he says, is it in vain that I cleanse my heart? Verse 13. How all day long I have been stricken. I've been chastened every morning. Every day I am in pain. Every morning I get up, I'm in pain. Uh, I mean, and I'm doing good. I wash my hands and, 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 and I'm cleansed my heart. And I don't seem to be getting the blessing of the wicked. It's very important because it's about perspective. And Christians have this problem all the time. If, if you're righteous, you'll be blessed with long life and happiness and, and, uh, and, and wealth and health. Well, tell this to the psalmist. Because the psalmist is looking out on the wicked and they have the blessing. They have the prosperity. They have the, the health. And the righteous are not prospering. The righteous are suffering. And he's saying, what is this? What kind of topsy-turvy world is this? He says, he says I, my feet had well nigh slipped, verse 2. My feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. In other words, I almost lost my faith. <laughs> I, almost, I almost lost my, my belief, my faith, my trust, because of what I am looking at. But then, he says, I thought about this and it was too hard for me. But I entered the sanctuary of God and understood the end of the wicked. And, and in other words, he said, I, I, I saw a different perspective. I go into God's house. I enter the sanctuary of God and I get a different perspective on the righteous and the wicked. The end of the righteous and the end of the wicked are very different. And so, yes, the wicked may prosper now, but their end is destruction. The righteous may suffer now, but their end is eternal life. And so the, the, the difference is the end, the, 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 the perspective that we must change our perspective on the reality and stop just looking at the situation in front of us. We need to have an eternal perspective on our life. And so the righteous suffers now, but their end is eternal life. So he gets to the point, uh, I must move on, but he gets to the point where he says, Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing that I desire upon earth compares to you. My heart and my flesh may fail, but God is a portion for In other words, all I need is God. I don't need, I don't need all that. I don't need the blessing. I don't need the prosperity. I don't need the good health because if I have God, I have everything because that is the, 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 the outcome of the righteous. Fullness in God. Though my flesh and my heart fail, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who forsake you will perish. But it is good for me to draw near to God. In the Lord God, I have found my refuge. And, and so on. So this is, this sisters and brothers, is our, our ultimate hope. That in God is our refuge. And we don't need to look at the prosperity of the wicked and envy the prosperity of the wicked. Because their end is destruction. Our end is eternal life. And that is why I love this psalm. It's a great psalm to remind us of our change our perspective on life, if that is your perspective when you look out at the world. All right, let's, um, let's move to our first reading, which is uh, Daniel. Daniel, see, this is, I, don't, I, won't, I won't get to talk much about this this evening. Daniel chapter 9, Daniel chapter 9, from verse 1. To 19. I'll just read it. Okay. 
Daniel chapter 9, Daniel's prayer for his people. It was the first year of the reign of Darius the Mede, the son of Ahasuerus, and who became king of the Babylonians. During the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, learned from reading the word of the Lord as revealed to Jeremiah the prophet that Jerusalem must lie desolate for 70 years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and fasting. I also wore rough burlap and sprinkled myself with ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, O Lord, you are a great and awesome God. You always fulfill your covenant and keep your promises of, full, of unfailing love to those who love you and obey your commands. But we have sinned and done wrong. We have rebelled against you and scorned your commands and regulations. We have refused to listen to your servants, the prophets, who spoke on your authority to our kings and princes and ancestors and to all the people of the land. Lord, you are in the right, but as you see, our faces are covered with shame. This is true of all of us, including the people of Judah and Jerusalem and all Israel, scattered near and far. Wherever you have driven us because of our disloyalty to you. O oh Lord, we and our kings, princes and ancestors are covered with shame because we have sinned against you. But the Lord, our God, is merciful and forgiving. Even though we have rebelled against him, we have not obeyed the Lord, our God, for we have not followed the instructions he gave us through his servants, the prophets. All Israel has disobeyed your instruction and turned away, refusing to listen to your voice. So now the solemn curses and judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured down on us because of our sin. You have kept your word and done to us and our rulers exactly as you warned. Never has there been such a disaster as happened in Jerusalem. Every curse written against us in the law of Moses has come true. Yet we have refused to seek mercy from the Lord our God by turning from our sins and recognizing his truth. Therefore, the Lord has brought upon us the disaster he prepared. The Lord our God was right to do all of these things, for we did not obey him. O Lord our God, you brought lasting honor to your name by rescuing your people from Egypt in a great display of power. But we have sinned and are full of wickedness. In view of all your faithful mercies, Lord, please turn your furious anger away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain. All of the neighboring nations mock Jerusalem and your people because of our sins and the sins of our ancestors. O oh, our God, hear your servant's prayer. Listen as I plead for your own sake, Lord. Smile again on your desolate sanctuary. O oh my God, lean down and listen to me. Open your eyes and see our despair. See how your city, the city that bears your name, lies in ruins. We make this plea, not because we deserve help, but because of your mercy. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act. For your own sake, do not delay, O oh my God. For your people and your city bear your name. Amen. Hallelujah. What an amazing prayer. Wow. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's some powerful prayers. Sisters and brothers. It, we could do worse than modeling our prayer off something like this. What a prayer. The bulk of this prayer that, that Daniel is praying is, 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 is asking for forgiveness. Recognizing, <clears throat> recognizing, 
recognizing the sin of his people. It is because of their sin while they are in exile in Babylon. It's because of their sin while God brought, brought, punished them and brought them into exile and scattered them all over the world. And so he is praying that God will hear and rebuild his city and return his people. But that is a prayer of, it's a fasting. Remember, he's fasting. He's put on sackcloth and ashes as a sign of humility and penitence. In other words, he's down in the dirt and he's saying, oh God. I, I, I can't even stand. I don't, I don't have anything to stand on. I am, I am so broken. Uh, I'm so sinful. We are so sinful. Indeed, he's praying on behalf of the people. And he's, he's interceding for them and praying, confessing the sins of the people to God and seeking God's mercy. You know, he says, we, we make this plea not because we deserve it. You know, this is a very important point. It's not because we are your chosen people. It's not because we have Abraham as our father. I'm not, I'm not even appealing to you on the basis of what you've done through Moses and the prophets and Abraham. Lord, that is, I, I, I'm, I'm not even coming on the basis of those people, on, 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 the, on the covenantal relation. I am coming to ask for mercy. I just need mercy. We just need mercy. Not because we deserve help, but because of your mercy. Oh Lord, forgive. Oh Lord, hear. Oh Lord, listen and act. You know, it's a, it's a great prayer. And, and, and sisters and brothers, may I just say, it's a prayer that we can pray for our world. It's a prayer that we can even pray today for, for Israel, for the current Jewish situation in our world. The Jews as, uh, generally have neglected Christ. They have... They have turned their backs on Christ, but uh, may I just add, Christ has not turned his backs on them. You know, as Paul says in Romans 11, that, um, that one day Israel will, 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 will turn to Christ as, as, you know, we are to pray for, pray for the conversion of the Jewish people and that they will return to, to, to God um, and return to their Savior. Jesus Christ. And, and that is, this is part of this prayer. Daniel is praying for his people, for the people of God of old, of course. But as we pray, we can pray this prayer for ourselves, for our, for the church, for the people today, and indeed for the people of Israel today as well. All right, let's, let's leave that there because my time is almost done and I have yet to go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 11, Revelation chapter 11 and verses from verse 15 to the end. Revelation 11 from verse 15 to the end. Okay. <clears throat> then, then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices shouting in heaven. The world has now become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. The twenty-four elders sitting on their thrones before God fell with their faces to the ground and worshipped him. And they said, We give thanks to the Lord, to you, Lord God the Almighty, the one who is and who, who always was. For now you have assumed your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were filled with wrath. But now the time of your wrath has come. It is time to judge the dead. And reward your servants, the prophets, as well as your holy people, and all who fear your name, from the least to the greatest. It is time to destroy all who have caused destruction on the earth. Then in heaven, the temple of God was opened, and the ark of his covenant could be seen inside the temple. Lightning flashed, thunder crashed, and roared, and there was an earthquake. 
and the terrible hailstorm. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just, just to say, whenever there you find in Revelation, lightning flash, terrible earthquake, thunder roar, and great and terrible hailstorm, that sort of thing. Anytime you find that, it's a sign that judgment is coming. God's final judgment is, is, is being poured out upon sinners, upon the wicked, upon earth. And that's what this seventh trumpet brings. The seventh trumpet is, is the final judgment of God upon, upon the wicked, upon the sinful, upon the sinners who refuse to repent. Um, you see that the, the, there have been six trumpets before and, and all of the trumpets are warnings calling people to repentance. This is this is happening. This is happening. Turn to God. That final trumpet is God's outpouring of his wrath upon all those who refuse to turn to him in repentance from the seven from the first six trumpets trumpet blasts. So, as the angel sounded this trumpet, we are told loud voices in heaven saying, The world has now become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. This is it. This is a final, final trumpet, and, and it's an announcement. That the, this final trumpet is an announcement that the, 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 the whole world has now become the, the kingdom of God. And God will, God will now reign forever on the earth. This is the very end. You know, um, Paul says in First Thessalonians, for the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will rise first and so on. This is the final trumpet. This is the final trumpet. That trumpet that says God is coming. God is putting his appearance. And so... Now the kingdoms of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever. And so every, all of heaven starts to praise God and worship. 24 elders, they bow before the throne, their faces to the ground and worship. We give thanks to you, Lord God, the Almighty, the one who is and always was. Now the nations are filled with wrath, and you have now poured out your wrath upon them. It is time to judge the dead, reward the, 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 the saints. So it's a, it, it is a final judgment. That's the point. I mean, I, you, you get the point. This is it. So this last trumpet is a symbol uh, to signify that this is the very end. This is God's final announcement to the world that there was no more delay. Um, the time has come for God to judge the world and and that and of course it it says it is time to destroy all who have caused destruction on the earth it's god's time to bring destruction on those who who live lives of violence and war and destruction and now it's god's turn to turn the tables on them and bring judgment upon them this is heaven these sisters and brothers is the final judgment. So now, so, so that's the final trumpet. And then there is going to be an interlude. We're going to talk about the, the, the cosmic war in heaven that goes on in chapter 12 and, and 13. So but, but we'll leave that for tomorrow. Let's pray. Our Father and God, we thank you for bringing us to the end of another day. We are grateful for your grace. Lord, as we reflect on the prayer of Daniel this evening, and what a uh, powerful prayer he prayed for, uh, for the salvation of his people, for the forgiveness, for, for, for confessing his sin, seeking pardon. Lord, we come with that same attitude this evening seeking pardon, seeking forgiveness. Lord, we don't come resting on anything in us, trusting in any anything in us, but we come trusting in you, seeking your mercy for ourselves and indeed for our world. Oh God, have mercy on our world. It's a world that is sinful. It's a world that has, that has not heeded the trumpet warnings that have gone before. 
O oh God, we pray that before that final trumpet blast, that many in our world will turn from their evil ways and turn in repentance and faith to our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, we pray. We pray that the warnings of the trumpets that have been going out into the world, wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, um, diseases, famine, and, 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 and even demonic activity. Lord, we pray that these trumpet blasts will be heard by sinners in our world and they will see the sign and turn to their creator. Lord, we pray. We pray for the world. We pray, Lord, for the salvation of this world. We pray that sinners everywhere will turn in faith and trust to you. You are the only, you are the only savior of our world. And so, Lord, we pray that all those who, who are lost in the darkness of this world, those who are lost in, 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 in all sorts of philo philosophy or even false religion, idol worship, and those who are lost in their own, in their own pride and self-centeredness. Lord, draw them out, we pray. Bring them out of the darkness and into your marvelous light. We pray for the world. Lord, we pray for Israel. We pray for the, the conflict between, between Israel and Hamas. We pray, Lord, that, oh, we pray for an end to that fight. Oh, God, we pray for peace. We pray for the protection of the people who are caught in the crossfire, especially the vulnerable and the weak, the children, Lord, who are, who are dying as a result of this war. Have mercy, O oh God, have mercy. Have mercy on these people. And indeed, we pray for the Jewish people. Lord, we are reminded of St. Paul's word that uh, where he said, I myself would rather be cast out because of the salvation of his own people, the Jews. And so, Lord, we pray for the Jews. We pray for their own salvation. They gave us the commandments. They gave us the law. And indeed, they gave us the Messiah. And yet they have turned their backs on all that. And so, Lord, we pray for them. We pray for the Jewish people that they will turn in faith to the, one, the only Savior who can save them, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We, we pray for them. We pray, Lord, that they will turn to you in faith and in trust and in repentance and in humility. Seek, seek uh, to be forgiven of their sins. Like like all of us, by faith, not by keeping the law, as Paul reminds us in his writings, that, that it's not through the law that we are going to be justified, but through faith in Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, for the Jews, for the people of Israel, for, every, for the Jews everywhere, not just in Israel, but everywhere, in every community, that they will turn, that the scales will fall from their eyes and their hearts will be softened and they will turn to Jesus, the Savior of our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our church. We pray even as I'm in this building right now, we pray, Lord, for this space, that you will sanctify this space afresh and use this ground to be holy unto you, dedicated for your worship, for your service, and that all those who pass by this place will be drawn like magnet to the to the to the love of Christ that emanates from this building we pray that everyone who come through these doors for whatever purpose for the food bank for worship for the children um, the children's club that lord everyone who come through these doors will experience something of your power and your attractiveness in their lives and that they'll, they'll be drawn to you without them realizing why but lord your holy spirit will draw those who come through these doors into a relationship with you so lord bless us we pray so that we will be a blessing to the people around us to those who are lost in the darkness of their sin and and we pray that you 
your light will shine. Lord, even as we as we draw nearer to Christmas, we pray for all the Christmas cards that we'll be giving out this Christmas season during this Advent time. We pray, Lord, that you will anoint every card with your with the presence of your Holy Spirit, that those who receive these cards will be drawn again, will be drawn to you. And so, Lord, that, uh, that the cards will be a point of contact to, 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 to a symbolic representation of your grace and your love reaching out to those who are lost. So, Lord, bless our endeavors this Christmas season. Bless our children's services. Bless all of our carol singing as we get into that season. And, indeed, bless all of our efforts. Lord, use us so that we will be the salt and light that you've called us to be, that we will be effective in our witness for you right here in this community. And we pray for your church in every community, in every corner of our world, that your church will fulfill the great commission to proclaim Christ, to proclaim your kingdom, your gospel, in, 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 in our local, lo, location, in our locality, wherever we are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And our collect, Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord watch over you and protect you. May the Lord give you rest and peace tonight, sisters and brothers, as you sleep. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So have a good night, sisters. And